thought for this album, because uh, I thought we needed to have a little bit of a, I, well I needed to have a little bit of a focus, because obviously um, we had a little bit of a break, and because uh, we've had a baby. And uh, so I thought, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a little bit of a theme to this one, and we live in Cornwall. And I do know lots of people that are into all the Cornish folklore and all the rest of it. And, uh, and um, yeah, it's, it's basically Cornish tales and tales from the newspaper, from the West Britain that was, you know, in the, ta uh, in the 1800s, stories out of that. And, and just things that I've, I've managed to gather up over the last five or six months whilst I've been not gigging. So was that a fairly unusual process? In the totally new for me, totally new for me. Every every other um, song I've ever written has been my own musings on life, either on a in a in a personal way or just an observational way. I got let into the, the bowels of the uh, Red Ruth uh, Cornish Studies group and, they, and, and got led into the back room where they keep all the manuscripts there and all the, the old newspaper clippings and all stories and old books. I read quite a lot of books um, and uh, just even the old... If you go into tourist shops and they've got mm. unusual Cornish tales, you know, you get little glimpses from there of, of stuff and then you can sort of investigate more into the into the story it's been quite it's been quite exciting actually there is a big new addition in your life isn't there but a little four month old baby arlo and it's just amazing and mad because <laughs> you were gigging up till your eight months. Yeah, yeah, I carried on gigging right through the festival season. I was pregnant right through the festival season and uh, just got dresses made that sort of suited the style, yeah. really. You know, a lot of people didn't really know. And uh, yeah, it was great. And I gigged right up until six weeks before I had him. Great. Yeah. And then you basically had, you know, as Tim was saying earlier on, you've had sort of five months. Yeah. You're not gigging, although you've been working in the sense of getting an album ready. For yeah, him. we've had we've had well, it's been four months since he was born, and we haven't we did our first gig about three weeks ago. Mm. So we've we've started again, but we've had three months of what we thought would be creative time. Mm. Baby in the corner, tucked away quietly, and you know we just be tucking off feet, and it's not quite been like that because mm. obviously it takes a lot more um, work than you expect. So. Tim's been playing and playing and playing and playing to Arlo to get him to sleep at night, playing in the day, constantly with him in front of him, just testing out all the new songs when he can. And I've been looking after him in the other room when Tim jams with Luke. So I've been in the kitchen with him and then I've just sort of been scribbling things down in, that are in my head while I can. And then sometimes he has his headphones on and sits in with us and we all jam together Well. Olive has his headphones on, which he really enjoys. Yeah. He loves sitting and watching the music. And then Tim's had to go to jam with Richie. So we've just worked it however we can, really. I haven't had as much I was going to say, creative. it does seem like you're the one that hasn't had the chance to no. really get you. No. <laughs> <laughs> as you've been running around the lanes here, yeah. singing, pushing her. Yeah, that's, pusher. I normally write when I'm walking. That's my way of writing. And uh, although I'm doing quite a lot of walking, my brain is, has been elsewhere a lot mm. of the times. So it's only now I'm just trying to strap him on, put him, carry him and sing at the same time, record it on my iPhone or push him in the buggy and just any little snippets of anything I'm just having to record because mm. they're gone. <laughs> I forget them would so you, quickly. You know, before um, Arlo came along, that would have meant, made you quite anxious, wouldn't it, if you couldn't have gone to the studio without knowing what yeah. you were know. Yeah, yeah, I am still a bit anxious. <laughs> I, I've written, the, I know the songs inside out from hearing Tim play them all the time. So I know them in my head, but my parts are only in my head. Mm. And normally I'm quite fastidious. I, I have everything worked out in advance I, to the nearest note. Right. And, well, I do improvise some things, but going into the studio, I like to know I've written the best so that I can. And this time, I'm just going to be getting in there and going for it mm. and seeing what comes out. <laughs> Well, yeah, what's been happening so far is very good. So. Yeah, I've been. It's been amazing, actually. Yeah. The, considering the way we've worked it this time, it's been. Mm. It's 
been amazing. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to try and go with the flow. Obviously, I'm working parts out now, sitting here in the sunshine. Backdrop, don't it? You, yeah, I mean, for a place to record, it's uh, pretty top notch. Have you actually recorded here before? Yes, we did our last album here, The Antiquate and the Arcane, and the single of the album because we recorded The Antiquate and the Arcane, and then um, six months later, recorded uh, Days of the Dance from The Antiquate and the Arcane, but a shorter version because we right. wanted to make a video. So we did that and, uh, and we recorded that here with Luke. Yes. Because we did the other album, album with, yeah. with Jamie yeah. and then Jamie left the band and then Luke joined temporarily and then it ended up being... As he thought, and then yes, we never and let then, him go. And then we never let him go. <laughs> ended up being permanent. So, um, yeah, and then we, when we did the single, we, we did it here as well with Luke, which was really nice. And Richie, of course. Richie was here. Yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, yeah. Richie's come back into the fold really after many years and is well, a fairly permanent yeah. part of the... Yeah, he's, he is fairly permanent, fairly as permanent as Rich will ever be. Um, yeah, so he, well, he was one of the original, well, he was the original third Daft Monkey. There was me and Athenian Rich who, who splintered off from an old band called Luke Lordrick, which was the Cornish name for another band called Moon Dragon. It's evolved. Moon Dragon didn't originally have Richie in it. But then he joined Moondragon, and then Moondragon sort of splintered into two and became Lordric and Moondragon, where depending on an acoustic y type uh, version of Moondragon was the Lordric. Right. Moondragon was quite rocky, yeah. drum kits, all the rest of it, toms, electric guitars. Lordric was acoustic guitars and jambe, and that's when Richie right. started doing the jambe thing and the hand percussion. Ever since the first time I played with him, we just managed to bounce off each other, right. and, I, and, I, and I like his guitaring, and so I mm. kind of follow that. Uh, I always have done. Um, and so that that was it was very natural to do that with um, with Lucas. I mean, he's an exceptional player, and uh, obviously we've I've done so many gigs with him over the last couple of years mm. that we've kind of got this this bond going, and he can slot in with me. He's a very versatile player. Uh, and I'm not the most complicated of players. I kind of like to keep things fairly straightforward, and uh, and he can he can groove groove around yeah. that, which is nice. And and that's how I prefer it really is to let let everyone else do all the uh, the talking around a solid beat. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I try to achieve. We've all got strange backgrounds in music, <laughs> and Tim spent years being quite psychedelic, and athena has been in all sorts of bands that have played you know live dance music, and she's done classical and all sorts. And yeah, my angle is is jazz and a lot of soul, Motown, things like that. So, and right through to, to rock and reggae and things. So, bringing bringing all sorts of different flavours and chucking them in and, and getting a Daft Monkey sound, which isn't any of the above, really. You've got three yes, which is really exciting. Which <laughs> it's quite funny, really, because Tim was doing a lot of songwriting with Luke while I was in the kitchen. I was in the kitchen thinking. That's my harmony. <laughs> yeah. That's what I would have sung. But that's good in a way. And the same with the tunes, because hey. he's picked up on some of the tunes. And so instead of me having the free reign, Luke's taken up on some of the things I might have done. So I've had to think of something completely right, different yeah. to do, which initially I was quite challenged by. And then I thought, well, this is brilliant. This, I, I have to come at it again from a different angle mm. and pick a different harmony or a different tune, because the boys have already got the tunes. Because yeah. Tim's playing more tunes on the guitar, because I wasn't there. So now I'm writing counter tunes over the top. Or some of the time I wrote the tunes, then they've taken them and I've got to write another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>